Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we get started? Uh, so good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, on this big new adventure here on how to do a conference online. So my name is Bob Allen, and I'm here with uh, uh, my team from Ideas. Everybody wave. <laughs> Uh, so they all know who you are, just in case. So, And we want to spend some time this morning talking to you about stories, because that's really where we spend our lives and what we do. And we're going to cover a lot of ground. So, you know, this is a two-parter. Today, we're going to talk a bit to you about stories and how you use stories as a design system. Wednesday, though, we're going to hopefully hear some stories from you and have a little fun with some improvisational thinking with you about how that could affect maybe one of your destinations. So look, if it goes by quick, that's okay. This is being recorded, it'll be available later. And of course, we're obviously here all week and after that, and we'll make sure you all know how to get in touch with us. So, so don't worry if you, if you feel like you missed something. Um, all right, three things. We wanna introduce you to storytelling today, and not just storytelling, although just storytelling is pretty powerful, but storytelling as a design system. Uh, we want to think about ways that you can use narrative to activate your destination, make sure your guest experience is exactly where you want it. And we want to offer a little bit of inspiration toward the end here about how you can make your own story and, and, wor and work with that as you go forward. Um, all right, real quick about us. Our company's called Ideas. We're based in Orlando, Florida. We came out of the Walt Disney Company. And really, this is us in a nutshell, um, you know, we're pretty right-brained, but we do realize that there's a strategy component to this. And so we like to toil in the field of designing new guest experiences and brands with storytelling. That's really what we do. We're going to do that again, are we? All right. Um, our work looks like this. We design destinations all over the world. Uh, some of them are cruise ports, some of them are on shore, some of them are theme parks, some of them are museums, and some of them are books. Uh, they're all destinations for an audience to experience a story. We make brands and we help people turn them on and activate them in the market. We do lots of training work. That, by the way, as a pro tip, is the number one brand activation strategy for destination entertainment. And, uh, and we make content. So we really are all around uh, how to create a guest experience that really works for people. Um, our clients are varied across the board. These are just a few. They range from uh, Super Bowl uh, in, in Houston to water parks, to cruise destinations, to theme parks, to museums, as I said. We're very, very comfortable across this and many other kinds of form factors. And the reason is because it's all based on narrative. It's all based on storytelling. Um, and so <clears throat> we frankly have never met an opportunity we couldn't really add value to. So this is why we're here, and we hope this is why you're here. We coined this term destination performance, and in some way, shape, or form, and I, I will offer, of course, that there are, are nuances to this, but every one of these six things, we're going to argue, drives value if you're in the destination or location entertainment business. Um, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about a cruise ship or a port experience or a destination you want people to come, you want more people to come over time, you want them to stay longer every time they come, you'd like to get a little more share of wallet each time they come, you want that satisfaction high uh, we, because you want them to come back more often and then you really, particularly these days, you really wanna drive that profound intent to recommend your destination. There is, as you all know, you know uh, these days there's no marketing or advertising in the world that's as powerful as the right mention on TripAdvisor or the right tweet or the right email to a friend. <clears throat> so we really want to think about whenever we work, how do we help our clients achieve this kind of destination performance? I think what's on everybody's mind is, what's that look like in a post-pandemic world? Uh, there will be a post-pandemic world. Uh, it's going to happen. Um, so that's where we want to spend a little bit of time today, I think, and, and to really talk about that. In summary, and we've done some research on this, we do, we do it every week, um, this is our take. The cruise business, destination leisure, that's a broad brush for anything from a museum to a theme park to a themed restaurant, is going to be back and it's gonna be powered back by probably the greatest pent up market demand in certainly in recent history and maybe forever. Uh, people are tired of being at home. They're tired of, 
watching their kids try to climb the wallpaper. They really want to get out. And the minute they believe that it's safe and reasonable to do that, they're going to do that. You, you all in the cruise side of the business know that your 2021 booking pace is pretty good. And with the recent uh, lifting of the US restrictions, uh, we should see the cruise industry coming back. Now, it'll take time. And, and I know that you're all as concerned as we are about doing this properly. And, and there is a proper way to do it. But I don't think anyone believes, no market analyst that we've seen believes that, nope, people are gonna stop vacationing forever. They're gonna be back. So our note today is really built on the back of this. If this is true, and we'll ask you to at least play along that this is true, what can we do right now to get ready for this and really position our destinations for extraordinary success? Said another way, how do we get people to fall in love with your story? Because uh, it truly is a passion. It truly is. And you know this. You know when you've really gotten to somebody, you can tell by their reaction. You can tell by what they say to you and your employees. So we really want to think about this. You know, and we, our argument is we have a detente in the market right now, and it's a great time to really kind of address this. So welcome to what, what we've kind of named World 5.0. Um, the first three were already taken. I'm sure there's a fourth. So we just jumped over and picked 5.0. And there are, there are a few things about World 5.0 that are probably well worth us spending a little time thinking about. Um, the first one is there will never be a return to normal. And the reason is that notion is premised on the fact that there ever was a normal and there wasn't. Second, um, there's also no new normal, <laughs> you know. And third, there will always forever and ever, as there always has been, be a next normal. Normal moves. No, what's normative moves around all the time. If you think about the arc of history, the world was not the same ever again after World War II. Um, you know, there are all of these inflection points across human history and they change everything and that's fine. That allows us to change too. So our premise is next normal. And I, I'm glad to see that, that version of that terminology being bandied about a little more now. Or maybe the next extraordinary, maybe the next amazing rather than the next normal. And given that, you know, like I said, this reset, this thing we're going through right now, painful as it is and awful as it is, is a tremendous opportunity to take stock take a breath and take some action that will really position us well for what's gonna happen next. So where we wanna go next is three key points of leverage, three long levers you can pull during this reset opportunity to really take advantage of that next, in, that next environment. Here's the first one. Really, if you think about, you know, we talk about entertainment, well, think about what drives entertainment. Well, entertainers drive entertainment. And I will tell you as a, you know, formerly, poorly paid guitar player, you really want to start with your guest. You really better know your audience or you're going to play the wrong signs, songs. They're going to laugh you out of the bar. So the first long lever is, is your guest. And the pro tip here to think about is maybe in what comes next, they're not exactly who you think they are or who they have historically been. So here's a few things to, to kind of, you know, put your noggin around. One is, um, the cruise industry will be back, but in the meantime, as it's coming back, there are these people who fly to destinations and they're interesting people. They tend to stay a bit longer. They tend to spend more money. They tend to be a little bit, maybe a little bit more affluent. So are we paying attention to them? You know, I think that's the real key here. Um, millennials and Gen Z, 32% of the world's populations are now Gen Z and 23% are millennials. That's over half of the human population of the planet fitting in those two demographic profiles. Uh, it might be worthwhile to, let, to understand who they are. And they are not, if you're not one of those generation, they are not like you. They're very, very interesting people. And they're where the puck is going, you know. The next one is, um, don't forget, there are people who live near you who may or may not have engaged you recently and they're right there. What can we do with them? The next one is, you know, by untourist, what we mean is, look, words matter. And nobody ever woke up in the morning and said, oh, great, I'm a tourist. 
most people would much rather feel embraced. They want to feel more like an insider, more like a local, you know, more like a partner, more like a savvy traveler of some kind. So how we think about that is really important when we're going to go back out into the marketplace. And, and finally, um, e even if you're not going to go there for ethical reasons, it is an important time to really make sure you are speaking to a diverse audience. There are lots and lots and lots of groups out there. If you are a welcoming destination, they will come and, and diverse groups come where they feel welcomed, where they feel safe, where they feel embraced. So, so these are kind of the big next plateau or platform drivers that, that we see going on. So what's that mean from a story standpoint? Well, good stories always begin with your audience, as we said. So things you can do now, primary research, you know, you want to make sure you're not basing your new story on the past. So primary research is about asking people right now. And, you know, there's lots of information out there. And I'm not saying you can't go online and do some background, but really going out and finding out who's likely to come next is very important because that's changing. The next one is, as you think about your, your new story, you've got some great experts the people in your organization or in your destination who are guest facing, who really talk to the guests, touch the guests, hang out with the guests, they've got tremendous insight into how guests actually behave. And so many times what we find is, you know, every day we have guests come and we think they're acting a certain way, but if we really look that they're not, they're acting a completely different way. Your staff can tell you. So can your guests. All of us have old friends. All of us have that great repeater. You know, that person who says, I come every year, or I come every two years, or I've come five times. If you have a good CRM program, you can go find out who those people are and let them talk to you. This is a good time to say, what story do you want us to tell? And then finally, you know, probably the most powerful thought about audiences is, who's not coming? Or who would you love to have come to your destination if you could just get them to come? Those are your new friends. So who do you want to invite next? So so the first step is, let's think about the audience. Okay, lever number two. This is really about your brand. Now, we could get into a very long and very detailed and quite robust uh, philosophical argument real quick uh, if we really wanted to think about arguing about what a brand is. I'm gonna define it operationally for a in a second, but it's not your marketing, it's not your advertising, it's not your logo. It is the warp and woof of who you are. It is your constitution. It's the foundation that your entire enterprise stands on. My favorite quote about a brand ever was from Jerry Garcia, who founded the Grateful Dead. If you are one of those millennials and you need help with who the Grateful Dead are, see, see us after class, we'll tell you. But one of the most successful rock and roll bands in the world. And Jerry said once, it's not, it's not enough to be the best at what you do. You're gonna be the only one who does what you do. That really defines for us, particularly what an experiential or destination brand needs to be. Our operating uh, definition is great destination brands always tell intentional stories that connect your destination, your, your reason for being with your guests' reason for caring about you. If your brand, whatever it looks and sounds like, if it isn't doing this in the market every day, even now, even before guests return, your brand is lazy and it's sitting around on the patio and you need it to work hard for you. So it's very important that we think about br the brand itself, this constitution of your organization, really as a vector, as a delivery system for this narrative story that you're, that you're out there in the, in the market with. So great brands change behavior. And right now we'd like to change some behavior. Uh, the behavior we want to change is please stop sitting at home. It's okay. I'll lay all the oxen free. Come back. So my favorite is Starbucks. Now, you probably have a favorite brand story too, but the cool thing about Starbucks is that they figured out a magic formula because nobody in their right mind would pay five or six bucks for a cup of coffee. We're all smarter than that. They give away free coffee and they charge you five or six bucks an hour to hang out. It's a branded experience. It's a behavior. You go to Starbucks, and there are millions of other examples we could use. But Starbucks is pretty common. You go there for an experience that has to do with your neighborhood or your workplace or where you hang out. So, so 
having behavior influenced by your brand is important. So here's a few next tips or next ideas about brands. Um, first one is be tall, not wide. Um, you don't wanna go like this with your brand. You wanna get really focused, laser beam focused. Real tall, so you poke up out of the noise in the marketplace and real deep, but you don't have to cover lots of territory. Be very specific and we'll, we'll be re reminding you of that same thing over, over and over. Be a category of one, you know. If there are other people in the lane you swim in now, change lanes to one where no one is swimming. And you can do this. Uh, and, and if you're honest, particularly those of you in the destination business, you know, lots of cruise destinations can look pretty similar. So figure out a way to get out of that lane and get in one where you're the only swimmer. This is also a good time to listen uh, and be in a dialogue with your guests. Uh, it's very important because Again, they'll talk to you and they are talking about you, whether they're there or not. So go find out, go look out. You can, you can find out now. And speaking of that, you should be engaged right now aggressively in what we would call a trans-narrative strategy. Put your story everywhere people can get it, every social media channel, uh, every place you can have a conversation. And finally, uh, there's a, a wonderful term in Forbes magazine, uh, I don't know if they coined it, it's the first place I saw it called Lycanomics. And we live in the age of economics. All that means is people tend to do business with people they like, and you need people to like you. So be likable. Uh, people will support your brand if they like you. Um, few pro tips on how brands deliver stories. This is a great time to turn up the conversation, heat it up. Please don't be out there saying, hey, COVID-19, we'll be back soon, hang in there. Nobody wants to hear that. What they wanna hear is, hey, we're here, we're happening, not quite open yet or opening soon, but in the meantime, let's talk. Here's some things. So be present, heat that conversation up. Stay super current. This is a good time to tell your story twice a day, wherever you can. So, so really beyond that. Um, <laughs> inside out simply means, as I mentioned, the strongest brand activator you can possibly achieve is to make sure everybody in your organization or in any organization who touches one of your guests understands your brand, understands the story underneath it, knows how to tell it, not just verbally, but in the way they comport themselves and the way they deliver that branded experience. And finally, the definition of a non-brand is we've got something for everyone. Tempting to say it because you'd love to see that, you know, oh gee, we, you know, can, how do we penetrate the market? Don't, be bold. Say, you know what? If you like this and this and this, we are those guys. We can deliver that to you like nobody else. It's okay to let other people do different parts. That's fine. So that's the brand lever we can pull. Now I talk a little bit about the bedrock, right? Um, the story is the key to all of this. This narrative, this very specific intentional design narrative that really is your brand story is the key. So why is that so important? Well, we'll argue it this way. Um, we are a species of animal with no claws, no fangs, can't run fast, no armor. We're not very big. Our young take years and years and years, sometimes over 20, before they can live on their own. And yet, we took over a whole planet. How do we do that? We did that because so far, we're the only beastie we know, or at least the best beastie at, telling stories to each other. We have this unusual ability to form something up here and transmit it to somebody else and then act on it. That's an extraordinary, extraordinary capacity. And that storytelling ability is really the definition of human innovation. Now, your brain turns out to be set up in a way, and you guys probably all know about this, you know, oversimplified, of course, notion of the right brain, left brain, where the right is basically feeling and imagistic and the left is linear and deductive. It's not exactly true, but it's a good model to talk about it. Stories turn out to be sort of the food your brain likes to eat the most. They're perfectly suited to the brain. They integrate both sides of that brain really well. And, and really, um, people rally to them for this reason, even when they don't know it. And by the way, we make up stories all the time. This is not something that's just 
unique to destinations. There's a fellow named Andre New uh, uh, sorry, Andrew Newberg, who wrote a book called Why God Won't Go Away. And it's about the fact that the thing we call reality is literally made up. We make it up one minute at a time. I make up a story every morning. It kind of goes like this. When I stand up, I will stick to the floor. Because if I didn't believe that, I'd have to hold tight to my bed so I wouldn't fly off into, the, into space. So we really are, when we mess with stories, messing with the fundamental foundation of the way he, the human species works. And that's why they're so powerful. So what's next with stories? Well, here's a few real important stories. <coughs> right now, a story about perceived safety is really, really important. Perceived safety narrative is different than clinical activity. They're both valuable, but, but a perceived safe narrative is critical. Um, we did some work recently for a Caribbean destination and we did some real, real primary research. And it turns out that, you know, masks and hand sanitizer and all those things were pretty far down the list. Um, the top thing on the list was, can I get access to an English speaking physician? So perception of safety is a critical part of your next story. Uh, people right now want to be together alone. <laughs> and you all heard the term bubble. And I know many of you are practicing, you know, bubbling ideas. But this notion of me and my cohort feel safe together, and we want to go do things together, but we want to stay insulated. Uh, there are ways to do that, and, and that should be a part of your story. Again, what's distinctive? You know, what is, what is your unobtainium that only you can deliver? And again, I'll go back to our Generation Z and millennial friends, you know, and we'll talk a little more about this later too, but they're not big and tall on pamper and luxury. They're huge on a selfie nobody else can get. And, and, and you have that. All of you have that. What is it? Those are things you want to put in your story. Um, authenticity is a word that gets overused. We recently had a tourism minister say, I don't even want to hear that word. Don't even say that word. But the truth is, whether you like the word or not, you know, Reality TV is not just for TV, it's also for travelers. You've got the real thing. In a lot of ways, you've got an advantage over theme parks and museums and stuff. So flaunt it, right? And finally, you know, it's going to be an interesting opportunity, I think, to rethink value instead of price. You know, that slippery slope of making it cheap, it's where we all go when cash flow gets a little tight, and I get it. But think about value. These are things that are going to be important because value will overcome resistance. So from a storytelling standpoint, and we'll talk about structure here in just a minute, this is an opportunity for us to find some new plot points for our destination story. So I think we start where we are. Well, what is that story? What, are we, what story are we telling right now? We wanna make that explicit. Don't assume, go see, turn the lights on, take a real good look at your story and say, what story are we telling or stories? And if it's plural, and it probably is, do they conflict? Do they align? Are we confusing? You know, then the next question is, okay, but what stories could we tell? What's laying there untold? What do you have as a story asset that if you added it to the plot would really punch it up, would make you, would make you distinctive? A um, couple things that are real unique to destination brands, as opposed to things like consumer products, or airlines even. Uh, doing turns out to win every time. Your story needs to deliver an opportunity for a guest to get their hands on something, get their hands dirty and get involved. Um, it's interesting to see, and again, we, there's some primary research that backs us up. The more, <clears throat> excuse me, the more virtual the world becomes with gaming and VR, et cetera, et cetera, the more people are beginning to value the visceral, real hands-on touch experience. So what can we do with our guests? And then finally, the last point about distinction again, hyper-locality. Not only can you put your hands on it and do it, our story will explain that you can only do it right here. And that hyper-local sensibility is very, very important. So if we think about those basics, and I know this is drinking from a fire hose a little bit, um, but these are, the, these are the things we want you to start really beginning to be willing to play with. And, you know, at the end of today, we're actually gonna walk through 
you know, a way to play with those things. So just to reinforce the point a little bit, this is a fellow named Larry Littlebird. Larry is um, uh, a Pueblo Indian from New Mexico. He worked with us on some projects. And Larry is a storyteller uh, and, and takes people out into the desert and really explains the way the world works from a native perspective. And this is Larry's quote, the word is what we hold precious. It's the closest expression to creation. Now, I don't wanna be overdramatic, but on the other hand, this is real. So when we talk about story, when we're saying all these things about story, 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 this is why. If we get the story right, we are literally going to create the reality we want, and we're gonna create that for our guest. And you, you all know the value chain. If we take care of the guest and we take care of our staff, that those two together will take care of the bottom line. So we really want to start at the basics. So, so story sermon, right? This is about creating reality. It's important, so it's worth paying attention to. Okay, so story has been expressed. All right, we've got a, we've got a narrative cooking around in our head. How do we take that to the next level? How do you design with narrative? So here, here's the opener. And again, native language of the human species, right? This is how we do reality. So typical, if we have a problem to solve or a design task to complete, the problem or the, or the, or the goal statement shows up and our normal process is this. We design a solution, we produce it, we deliver it, then we measure it, and we see if we met our objective. Um, and if we met the objective, we win, and we did well, and we get the outcome we hoped for, probably. And if we didn't meet the objective, we have to go back and redesign, start the process over. So if you're really, really good at what you do, let's presume you are, um, and you do it this way, you have a chance of being right, probably better than a 500 batting average, to use a baseball analogy. You're going to be right better than half the time, 60, 70% of the time, you're gonna be right. But the 30% of the time you're not right, you gotta go back and start over and do it again. What we've learned over the last 20 years of, of our practice, particularly in destination entertainment design, is if instead we say, hold on, we get the problem, we get the issue, what story are we living in with it? And importantly, as we said earlier, remember lever number one, who's our audience? This is knowable. We can know who that audience is. We can know that anecdotally, we can know it gut, and we can know it from a standpoint of data. So who is our real audience? What do we want them to do? We want audiences to behave in certain ways, just like Starbucks. They want you to rent that chair for five bucks, hang out for an hour. Well, we want audiences to behave in certain ways. What are they? They are those six things that we showed earlier about destination performance. We want them, we want more to come. We want them to stay longer. We want them to spend more when they're here. We want them to report that they're satisfied. We want them to tell their friends. So if we build it this way, we start with a story, then we design, produce, and deliver to the objective. We're going to be right 90 plus percent of the time. More importantly than that, we're going to build this feedback loop because now we're in a relationship with our audience all fundamentally premised on a story that we live in together. So this is really important. And we use this exact system, just like, just like this block diagram, in everything we do. It doesn't matter whether it's a children's book about the weather, or it's a new brand for a nation, or it's a top secret training product for the military. We do it this way every time, because it works well every time. It's a very efficient way to design human experience. So again, very important. You can't do it from the ground up. You don't start with a piece of land. You don't start with the footprint. You don't start with any of that. You start with this fellow, our guest. You know, who is that? And then the idea is we enter a dialogue. We're literally enacting a myth. And by the way, that word myth, particularly in American parlance, is unfortunately occasionally conflated uh, to mean lie or untruth. That's not what it means. Uh, you are engaging in myth. Myth is how human beings tell stories about the world so they can understand it better. The Greeks didn't make up the gods for no reason. 
they said, well, occasionally over there on Mount Olympus, there's bad weather and lightning and things happen. And, and sometimes people die and people get sick and there are floods and I wonder why. They didn't have science. They didn't have any of those things. They said, oh, well, here's why. They made up some stories. They concocted some stories and built them to help them understand the world that it, so that they could get through their day. This is the same thing we do when we tell a story and enact it in our destination. The great thing is people want to engage your story. It's very satisfying. If you think about movies you really like, books you really like, plays you really like, um, it's very innate and satisfying to say, ah, that ended well. That was really good, you know? Um, so this is what we're doing, you know, and this is why it's important to really get at it. So we like to think about, you know, sort of as a design process, as a design system, you know, we like to think about what we call building an experience reactor. So it kind of goes like this. So if you think about nuclear reactors for a minute, this part here, these three circles, culture, expectation, and delivery are the core. And these elements out here, which turn out to be the key components that make a story, uh, all fire in there and heat up the center of that core. Now, first you have to get that core kind of packed together. So we start with culture, right? You can't do anything about your guests' culture. <clears throat> they are who they are. If they're from Sweden, they're from Sweden. If they're from Antigua, they're from Antigua. If they're from Canada, they're from Canada. Um, but you can know who they are and you can know about them and you can understand who, they're, who they are, how they've been enculturated. Because again, we can do research and we can talk to our guests. This over here, the box, the, the bucket called expectation, you have influence over that. This is what we do with our marketing and communication effort. This is about the way we project and tell our story. So we can begin to say who's coming and who do we want to come? Okay, we got a story that we think is gonna resonate with that guest, really gonna draw them in. So that starts to pull these two pieces of our reactor core closer together. You know, the, remember the more they overlap, the more energy we're gonna get out of our reactor. This part down here, delivery, you have 100% control over that. That's, that's you, that's operations. That's the way we go out every day and do our work. You have all kinds of dials, knobs, and levers on that one. <clears throat> and the beautiful thing about that is once you get those other two situated, now you can begin to fine tune that guest experience by changing nuances of the way you deliver. And the way you turn those knobs really has to do with all these components of story. So just wanna talk about these a little bit uh, while we're on this. It's gonna be important for our little homework assignment later. So let's start with character. Stories have to be about someone. Um, even if that someone isn't a human, we still have to have a character. We have to be able to have someone in the story that our audience can grab onto and say, okay, I like them, or they're the villain, I don't like them, or, oh, they're just like me. But, but we, we do need to have characters in our story. They have to be about someone. They also have to take place some, somewhere, particularly when we think about destination entertainment. If you're not clear about your setting, if you really haven't developed deep detailed sense of place in your story, people will get confused. Uh, but yeah, but what's that look like? And as soon as you lose them, then they go off and... <coughs> um, the next one is really about plot, which is the way you, the reason you keep turning the page. Uh, it's action. It's connected actions over time that make it interesting. Um, voice, every story has a teller. What's the voice of your destination? Who is the persona of that destination? And what does he, she, or it sound like, right? Stories have to have enough detail to fill in the gaps for people so they don't, so, so they don't have to make too many things up on their own. They have to have emotional content. And most importantly, whether you resolve it or not, it's not a story unless there's some conflict. There has to be a little bit of conflict in a story or it gets boring. Now, you can resolve it with a happy ending or a sad ending, um, or you can let it hang for a cliffhanger, but there has to be some conflict. So, you know, when we think about stories and storytelling, these are the components that really go into it, not just a, a good destination story, but also, you know, any really good story has to have these, these components to it. All right, I know that's been a bit of a whirlwind. We hope if we haven't convinced you and made you a believer in story-based design. We at least hope we've 
tickled your curiosity a little bit. So I want to talk about what we do next. And this really bears on the work we're going to do together this week. And we really do hope everyone will engage this and that you'll all come back on Wednesday uh, while, we, while we share some of your stories and really talk about uh, boots on the ground, what they could mean. So here's your assignment. We'd like you, if you're willing, over the next 24 hours or so, to think about all you've heard here about storytelling. And we want you to think, come up with about a one paragraph story, five, six sentences, 12 if you like, more than three. Um, and we're gonna share in a moment some formats that might be good prompts for you. So just kinds of stories to give you a little bit of a bracket so you're, you're not staring at a blank page and, and panicking. And honestly, I know you're busy and I know you've got a bunch of uh, Sea Trade Cruise virtual stuff to do all week, but we would like you to get an hour or so and really write it down, type it, put it on uh, virtual paper or real paper if you prefer that, but don't just have it in your head, write it down. Um, and it's, it's a simple story. What's your destination going to be like next? And you get to make up all the rules. You don't have to worry about budget. You don't have to worry about anything. Just what is that unbelievably compelling destination story next? So we'd like you to write some of those. And then on Wednesday, when we log back in together, we're going to ask for a few brave volunteers, folks who are willing to really read their story out loud. There's something extremely compelling when a story is an oral tradition story when it's said out loud, not just posted on a screen. So we're going to want you to read your story. And then as you read it, after you read it, our team, our intrepid uh, design team, is going to do a little bit of live improvisational experience design with you. They're going to diagnose that story real quick. And they're going to say, well, you know what? If that's your story, we could think about this. or We could think about that. This might be a really good opportunity. Ooh, this might be a caution. And we're going to do that a little bit with three or four stories at least uh, to give you a sense of, you know, a, at least a taste of what this story-based design, you know, system and effort really looks like. So here are the profile, here are the, uh, the formats. One way you might tell your story is think of your story as a dating profile, an online dating profile. So, you know, you are reaching out as your destination and you're presenting the very best picture you can for your guest to want to date you. Um, and if you've never read one of these, there's plenty of them out there. You know, you, you know you've, you've all seen the cliche, you know, I'm a lot of fun. You know, I'm mostly safe. I'm kind of good looking, love walks on the beach. But we really want you to be the one that all of the people say, ooh, him, her, I want to date them. So it, it really is that heartfelt outreach to say, I'm, I'm your one. I'm the one you've been looking for. So, you know, a dating profile, um, in some sense, it, it has become a almost cliche because we all use it so much now, even if we're not conscious about it, we're, we're doing this all the time. So dating profile is, is, is kind of one mechanism that, that you can use. Next one is, you know, vacation rental or an Airbnb blurb, I won't even call it an ad, a description. Um, or for those of you who know it, VRBO, Vacation Rental by Owner. That's a really good one. So this is that chance to pop out from the noise, right? It's a delicious, lovely, yummy description of, you know, why you really, really want to come here. It, this one says, forget all those other ones. Let me tell you why you want to come here. And remember, rules of engagement are, you know, not everybody. You want the people you really want who are going to thrive and enjoy the distinctive experience that you've set up to be the ones who come. So, you know, this one is, is, is a, really, a really interesting one for destinations to think about. So the, the Airbnb blurb ad. Another one you might like is a job posting. So, you know, a one ad, you know, this one is, you know, you are a company and you are seeking your ideal guest as if they were an employee, you know. So what are all those qualities of that guest that you really want to attract uh, to your destination in order to really marry up 
the opportunity you have with, with that perfect guest. Um, so those are the ways to think about it. Now, if none of those work and you wanna try another angle on it, it's okay. But remember, it's gonna be a story. And, and we're actually gonna go back before we finish today and, and remind you what those elements are. Um, I do wanna caution you all a little bit though um, in, in this exercise for, because we want you to get value out of this. So if you're gonna play, do us a favor, you know, <laughs> really write a new story, take that hour and, and, and really go there and grab it. Um, don't go to your website and cut and paste your website copy. You know, don't come back with your latest ad in you know, a travel magazine. Um, don't come back with the latest you know, TV spot script. Really think about it. This is a chance to do something fresh, uh, to really go forward you know, and, and really look at this in a, in a more detailed way. So just to give you a quick flavor of this, um, you know, I tell you what, Duncan, we're going to jump around a little. Um, I'm going to I'm going to let you you do this, and then I'm going to pop back. Okay, so let me skip ahead two slides here. So my colleague Duncan is going to give you an example of one of these about a destination we've recently worked on, uh, and this one is that that tantalizing Airbnb blurb. Go ahead, Duncan. Okay, you can hear me, Bob. Yep. Okay. Revel in the flavors, flair, and fun that is Old San Juan at our welcoming Bayside Village within sight of your ship and an easy 200 paces away for your safe return. The island's vibrant culture, exciting experiences, and natural treasures are all within reach as we bring you the very best of Puerto Rico in a sprawling, comfortable, and safely spaced waterfront destination. Enjoy a warm, breezy view of the bay right next door to the sights and shopping inside Old San Juan. Day or night, here the band is playing, food is on the grill, drinks are ready, and the party is just getting started. Enjoy excursions around the old city, our spectacular beaches, or up to the mountains, but be sure to save some room for tasty tostones, fresh rum concoctions, or special handmade keepsakes as you reflect on your magical time ashore before beating the ship's horn back to your cabin. And if a gangway is not part of your plans, we'll be going strong long into the night whenever your day is done and you're ready to kick back and let loose to the rhythms of our colorful island. Okay, if you don't wanna go there, you weren't listening. I mean, I wanna go there right now. Um, that's an example of what we're talking about. That, that's, that's a story. That's a real narrative. Now, just for a second, and we're not going to get too deep into this, but what does that story tell me when I hear it you know, about that destination? It tells me I can eat. There's a huge component of Puerto Rico's culture available to me. One big tenet of that story's plot line is easy, easy, easy. Very convenient. I can, it's right next to the cruise dock. There's nothing intimidating. Everything's within fingertips. It's got the magic of a archetypal Caribbean island experience in it. You know, it, it's clearly about Puerto Rico. Ah, well, I'm an American citizen. Well, good, that's easy for me to get to. I don't have to have a passport. I can spend dollars. So all those things are packed into that story. If we wanted to, and we could actually use that story on um, Wednesday too, if you want to x-ray that one a little bit, we could literally go in and be begin decomposing that and say, all right, it, is that story on brand? Hmm. Well, is it a story no one else can tell? Is it addressing the audience we want? You know, we can go back and look at all those checklists. If it's doing that, we can literally start to decompose that story into design elements then. All right, what do we have to have for that story to be true? Well, we've got to have proximity to the cruise docks and we've got to have tremendous ease of access. We've got to have multilingual signage and wayfinding. We've got to have trained staff who really understand hospitality and how to deliver that and, and how to go above and beyond. Uh, we have to remain absolutely authentic in everything we do to the Puerto Rican culture. We can't do anything that you could do in Lincoln, Nebraska. No offense to Lincoln, Nebraska. So again, that starts to become a design criteria list that honestly, in, in our practice, we literally can then translate into architecture, into operating protocols, into brand messaging, in, 
and all the, the, the numerous and sundry things you have to do every day to be in the destination business. So, so that's really why we, you know, why we want to do this. So real quick, and allow me to fool around with the slideshow just real quick. I want to jump back to a, a keyboard here. If I can. Hold on. Sorry. All right. Because I think this is important. Let's go right back where we started. Right here. Remember, this is why we do this. This is what this is. These are the metrics we want to get to. And if we create our story in, in a proper way, and we do that, and we do that diligent work, um, these things have a much higher likelihood of actually happening for us, boots on the ground, than if we simply say, well, gee, this is what we've always done, or I don't know, try this. You know, that's the spaghetti at the wall strategy. Not so good. So this is really why we do it. It is, it is fun, by the way. Storytelling is you know, refreshing for the soul. It's great for the heart. It's great for the mind. Um, but it also works. You know, and that's, that's really why we're doing it. Uh, so I'd like to just remind everybody real quick. Um, and bear with me. I'm staring at something so tiny I can barely see it here. All right. Um, well, that was interesting. Sometimes. All right, here we go. We've done pretty well for a Zoom meeting, actually. So last reminder here. Things to think about as you're staring at that blank page. Remember, who's your audience? Not necessarily the ones you've always had. Who is coming Who's out there that you would like to have come? And by the way, you get to keep all the ones you already have too, if you want to. This is a real key question for a destination design story. Is the story you've made unique to you? Can anyone else in your space tell this story? Um, I'm not picking on anybody, but this, we find this particularly important when we work in the Caribbean, for instance. Um, the truth is every single Caribbean destination is very, very different culturally different, food and beverage is different, all kinds of things. But a lot of times, if you don't tell the story right, you tend to default to the mean and you sort of can begin looking alike. So what in the story says, and only we can tell this story? That's real important. What are those things? Because that's where your levers are. That's where that, that, that connection is with your guest. And again, pick one of those formats, come up with a narrative format that works. A straight up tale is fine, but one of those three formats we suggested might be a good idea to get you started. And then of course, it's really important that you remember the elements of story. It has to be a character your audience cares about. And the pro tip there is probably a character who's a lot like your audience it has to be in your mind when you think about the story. Um, and remember, you can personify your destination as a character. Setting has to be clear. What are its aspects so people can make pictures in their mind? What's the plotted action? In the story Duncan read, my goodness, we heard all kinds of things going on, you know, that, and we, we saw multiple pathways through that narrative. Whose voice is the story told in? Is, is it the destination's voice? Is it a guest voice? You know, this could be a first person kind of a tale. Um, is there emotional content? A, a litany of features and benefits, or worse, a litany of data doesn't connect. People want their heart grabbed, and you can do that particularly when we're talking about, you know, leisure destinations. And finally, although it's counterintuitive, right? Who goes on vacation to have a conflict? But the truth is, there needs to be some conflict underlying your story. One conflict is, you know, overcoming this concern about can I travel with, yes, I'm compelled to travel because these are all the reasons why I want to go. And there may be others. So we'd like you guys to be willing to embrace this and, you know, take a quick look at it, uh, write up a story. And we will then uh, hopefully see you Wednesday afternoon, uh, it's 2.30 Eastern time, uh, back on Zoom. And again, we'll get everybody on board as quick as we can. And then we're going to ask for some volunteers to read. And then we'll slice and dice these stories and chat about it a little bit. If this went by a little too quick, if you have questions or if you just want to uh, engage a little bit and you have time, We'd be delighted to do that. Um, here's where you can find us online. A couple of websites there that um, we're happy to have you take a look at. ideasorlando.com 
The other one's called no one else does this.com. We've got some specific destination entertainment examples uh, where we've actually used this story-based design system there. And if you'd like to do a little one-on-one, -on -one, if you have time, uh, my colleague, Mark Edson, would be glad to get an email from you. That's Mark's email address. Uh, of course, uh, we're all uh, logged into C-Trade Cruise Virtual as well. So you can find us through the uh, C-Trade Cruise Virtual app. And uh, we, will, uh, we will see you Wednesday. Um, Mark, I wanna ask at this point, while well, I'll get out of the PowerPoint, uh, did anybody chat any questions? And because we've got a minute or two, if you have any, we could uh, address a couple. I, I have not received any questions, any Q&A as yet, Bob. Well, that means everyone has either been napping or, or they've all been real quick studying and they all got this stuff. And the, record, the recording will be shared, uh, posted up. I'll, I'll let uh, Roz confirm that, but um, our C-Trade friends, but I believe it will be posted up. It that will. Was question. It will indeed. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to then let you guys go. I know you've got a busy, busy day today. We uh, absolutely are thrilled that you joined us this morning or this afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Uh, uh, I hope this was at least uh, interesting enough to grab your attention for a little few minutes. I hope you'll engage us and we hope everybody comes back Wednesday. And can't wait to hear some great stories. So everybody have a fantastic day and we'll see you all on Wednesday. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.